G'day everyone, Brian here. Welcome to the Japanese Whiskey Review. Uh, There's going to be a series on Jap well, the worst Japanese whiskies that I've tasted. It won't be every one because I didn't do tasting notes on every single Japanese whiskey that I've tasted. I'll put a link in the description. That's going to give you all the ones listed in black. It's got a description of how you can tell which ones are the worst. And they're usually at the top of the column written in black. And these are the ones I've tasted and I'm going to do them like by brand or more like be yeah, a brand with all the distilleries so start with Suntory that could be the yeah, Mizaki could be a Hakshu could be one of their blends whatever and some of them may surprise you because some of them sell for a lot of money I didn't pay that money for them neither neither would I under any circumstances even if they were still cheap so let's kick off with this one. Again, this, this is no particular order. They all scored under 80. Anything under 80 is a no repeat buy for me. So I'm going to start off with Suntory's Kiyoki Shiomi Pure Malt. 1981, 43%. And I said on the nose, quite woody and a little musty. Hints of moulding oranges, lemon and tin pears. Superficially, some of that might even sound so bad. On the palate, I got honey lemon, solvent, soap flakes, pepper, a little sherry, woody, and again the mouldy oranges. So you remember that was quite overwhelming. If you could think of like a, a, if you've gone away for a month and forgotten you've left oranges in a fruit bowl or two months and you come back and it's got green mould all around the, the skin, you get the idea. Finish pretty much as but the palate with some late coal not much to it really is what I wrote. Last word, not to my liking, neat, made a fair mixer. I'm sure these sell for in the thousands, over a thousand, whatever, a lot of money these days. And I rated it 75 out of 100. Crappy score for a crappy whiskey. If you've tasted it and you liked it, let me know. There was another one floating around, I think it was a little bit younger than that in the same sort of style. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Well, this is going to shock a few people, especially at the prices they want from these days, whether it's newer on the second hand, crazy market prices. And it's Yamazaki, 25 year old sherry cask, ringing in at a weak 43%. I say weak for the money. I would like cask strength, thank you. It doesn't mean cask strength is always better. Some whiskies are so full of flavour, even at 43% that they can cover that off. Anyway, let's move on. So, nose, very heavy sherry. Molasses, red berries, incense, cigars, old leather, white peaches. Sounds actually quite nice. Blood oranges, dark cherries, barbecue mesquite, well-steeped tea and oak. And this is where it starts to fall apart. On the palate, dry sherry, almonds, cranberries, Sweet oranges, cigars, marshmallows, sarsaparilla, sarsaparilla, and some serious heavy duty dry oak. And the finish, bow bow, dominated by drying old wood which ruins any semblance of balance. And I don't know when I wrote this, did I mention this one runs up to a thousand dollars a bottle? What are they now? 10? I don't know. Well past its used by date. In other words, it is so over oak, the oak tannins just ruin everything of the balance. I would much rather have the 18 year old. Mind you, these are released in batches, so they could be better or worse. This was just my experience. I mean, literally, it was like ultimately sucking on a piece of oak just soaked in sherry and just that puckering tartness and I know there's a few people out there that agree with me anyway if you've got thoughts let me know okay next up on the Suntory horror stories and uh, actually I won't do this one this was bottled by Suntory okay so I'm gonna move on now that I've looked at my notes I don't know, it's a Squire whiskey and it was bottled by Suntory. Oh, what the heck, let's do this one anyway. Squire whiskey selected by 
Daiwa Jitsugyo group bottled by Suntory. Okay, maybe it was just one of those ones that they selected and said we want this and Suntory made up a blend for them or something. Anyway, this was a cracker. Nose, mouldy orange and grapefruit skins intertwined with a strong floral note. Some woodiness and a little apricot. Palette, a soapy mouthfeel. It is bitter and adds little to what was found on the nose. Finish. Bitter, basic, and like Centauri's gold blended malt, which I think I've got on this list somewhere. Mercifully short. <laughs> In other words, I didn't want it hanging around on the palate. And this got 64 out of 100. Wow. Next up on Centauri's list. Okay. Centauri gold sherry cask blended whiskey. 42% ABV. Excuse me, Kampai. Nose. Not great. A little sherry and oak. Label says it was fully matured in sherry casts. Doesn't taste like it. Also, also plasticine, glue and cheap brandy. Palette a little better than the nose with bread dough, some lime and tangerine. Then ruined again, oh gosh I can remember this, by the plasticine and glue. Yeah, what a horror story. Finish, bitter with plasticine and again thankfully short. Back in the day, according to the Whiskey Exchange, I'm not saying they got this wrong, but I remember reading this on their on their website. This was bottled in the 70s. Not Suntory's finest hour. Oh wow. Rating 60 out of 100. Hmm. Anyway, I wrote some other notes that aren't really relative. You know the score. Uh, some speculative notes. You can actually find the, the full bit of the review on the on the blog. The online blog. Let's move on. Oh, this one sells for good money too. I've heard people like this. Right, Suntory Imperial. Blended whiskey, no aid statement, 43% ABV. Nose. Icing sugar, lemon, mandarin, vanilla, pepper, banana and creamed corn. Palette, fried banana, mandarin, or mandarin, butter, vanilla, pepper and almonds. Finish, mandarin, butter and a little pepper. And I wrote, the most imperial thing about this blended whiskey is the lovely decanter style bottle it comes in. Beyond that, it is a fairly simple offering. Rating 78 out of 100. Next up, Suntory Zen Pure Malt, 43% ABV. Oh. Another one with 40% ABV, if it's cheap enough. Yeah, I buy, buy plenty of Scottish blends like that and some single malts because they're kind of the cheapest stuff we get here in Australia. Okay, I wrote about the nose, gentle and fairly closed. Notes of pear. Oregano or oregano as we say here in Australia. Varnish or paint thinner. Eucalyptus, pepper and salt. Okay, and then I wrote, okay, it doesn't sound closed, but it's a few days between whiskies and I'm picking up more than I normally would with this one. Palette is smooth and soft, mainly malt and cream. Some nutmeg spice and a little pepper. The finish was short, simple, a bit dry and dusty. Then a mineral, like, mineral like quality and bamboo shoots. And last word, this is uncomplicated malt, easy to drink, nice enough, but lacks complexity. It did get 70, so it didn't quite go into that 70 mark, but it is in my, my blacklist of never to buy. And finally, of the ones I did tasting notes on, some of the Suntory uh, is the Suntory Pure Malt 
seven-year-old white label. Now there's a couple. There was another one. I think there was the eight-year-old that looks like this, and that was yeah had the black label instead of the white. Obviously, I found that a bit better because it's not on this list that I can find. And I did have a bottle, so I believe I would have written notes somewhere on that one. Nose: an off note of slightly rotting stone fruits, nectarines, and plums, wattle flower, and currants. So it's kind of barely basic. Palette: I guess there must have been some sherry cask in this. Raisins, dark plums, plum jam, figs, black pepper, and hoisin sauce. Finish medium length with raisins, figs, black pepper, and an off note from the nose returning. Yeah, that was just too much on the, the rotting stone fruits. There's overripe and there's rotting. Overripe can be quite rich. Rotting, not so good. And I gave that 76 out of 100. So whether you choose to ignore these if you see them on the second hand market on those ratings is up to you but these are no returns for me well the, they would have been returned if i could get my money back anyway that's the suntories next up we'll have the knickers thanks for watching bye for now